Hey, how is everyone? I trust you're well, we are well. My name is Angie Morenga, you're watching Just Angie. It's been such a great pleasure interacting and engaging with you. I love your responses, I love your, your shares, your feedback. It's been so, so encouraging and I'm so glad that you, you're enjoying the Just Angie videos just as much as I am. You know, I was telling somebody, even I watch them. I watch them and I minister to them and I'm like, yeah, hallelujah, and I have my moment. So I pray that they are encouraging you too and you're telling me you're really being blessed. And it's just amazing the power of social media and the different places where I hear you're, you're, you're telling me you're watching from. Um, so I really, really am encouraged. So God bless you. Sit back, relax. Today, I have a, a guest in studio. Her name is Nina, and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. We're just going to talk about all things purpose. I really want her to share her story. And remember, we share so that you may gain hope. You may learn from her story. You may glean leadership lessons from her story and begin to apply them. And, and just also, we want to offer you hope, you know. And her, all of us have, have a life and a journey that we've been through and challenges that we've overcome and, and the way that God has turned um, maybe things that were meant for harm and he's turned them into good because I feel that that's her, her story. So um, sit back and relax and let me introduce my guest. Um, Nina, first of all, welcome so much to Just Angie. Thank you for inviting me. And I know you're usually on the other side of the camera, not on this side. Yep. You're used to being behind the scenes in media, <laughs> yes. doing all the production and everything. So yeah. I know that this is um, new for you by being on this side, but welcome. I want you to look into the camera, just introduce yourself, tell them who you are and how you want them to know you. Okay, great. Um, my name is Nina Bola. I am uh, 31 years old. I am a mother of two amazing children, even Aurea. They are 11 and 6 years old. And uh, I'm a single mom. I am an entrepreneur. And also work as a consultant uh, in the film industry, at times as a producer, at times as a casting director. Um, that's my background. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad. But there's so much you left out. You talk about brand wagon, fixed caliber, <laughs> and info. I'm an entrepreneur. I yeah. have three so have companies. Mm -hmm. um, they do into casting, um, advertising, and as well photography. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's where I want to start. You know, okay, as I start great. on this journey. Yes. How did you, you, where are you from, first of all? Oh, great. Uh, I think I'm an African. Yes, you are <laughs> truly an African. Mm. I am an African. Um, my dad is Congolese from DRC, mm -hmm. and my mom is Randese mm -hmm. uh, from Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And um, I live in Kenya because I, I came here to study in Kenya. And then I got married to a Kenyan, um, my late husband. And then, of course, um, yeah, it's... Uh, but at some fun. point you also lived in Cameroon. Oh, I've lived in many countries, actually. Wow. Wow. Um, I was born in Burundi, in wow. Bujumbura. And we stayed for about 10 years, and there were war that started. And then our dad uh, moved us to Kinshasa in Congo. Mm -hmm. And when we were in Kinshasa, after a couple of years, uh, we had again war mm -hmm. between Kabila and Mobutu. Mm -hmm. Everybody heard about it. And then we left for Douala in Cameroon. And when I was in Douala in Cameroon, at some point, I left for studying in Benin. Yes, Cotonou. Um, I left wow. there for two years, um, both in Benin and in Togo. And then, of course, I came back uh, in Cameroon. And then when I got in Cameroon, um, that was about two years before my dad passed on. Mm. And we were looking forward to, to university. I, I used to be my dad's best, best friend. So yeah. we'd have really good discussion. And we were discussing about my university and what I would like to do in life and all. And I used to say, me, I want to be a consultant. I, I don't want to be an employee. From a very young age, actually. Mm. I've never wanted to be employed. Um, and just do business. So he asked me where I would like to study. So I told him, because of course, my young siblings, everybody wanted to go to either America or Europe, you know. I've never been, I've always been that ghetto girl. So Africa girl. Africa is my continent, you know. Hallelujah, mine too. Yes, so... I told him I would love to go in a country in Africa that speaks English because I must speak English mm -hmm. as well. Um, so we had either Kenya, Ghana, or South Africa wow. to go. Um, at the time, he was working in Egypt, in Cairo, so he was trying to convince me to go to the American school in Egypt. In Egypt. And I was like, you know what, if I'm around white people, I'm going to chapa them or something of the sort. You know me, I'm, I, I love my culture. I mean, I don't like... Uh, 
being in a in a zone where I don't feel like I'm around people who are like me, you mm. know, in an and environment of people yeah, like you. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I love I love the African feel and the flavor and everything that goes with it. You mm. know. Um, so at the time um, we were looking at schools. I remember I was applying online with the University of Nairobi here, um, as well in Ghana and in South Africa. And suddenly during that time, my dad um, passed on through the KQ crash yeah. that happened 10 years ago in Douala. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when he left, uh, it was actually two weeks before I went to do my high school diploma. I was going to, uh, to do my exam. And I was really, I mean, because in my, in my house, I'm the firstborn. Everybody looks up to you. My mom has always been a mother at home. Um, so when all that happened, everybody was like, what's next for us? And that's the time I was, you know, Margaret Thatcher. I'm, I'm called that way at home because I that's the time I, I was like, Akuna Kulia, hey. we are doing this. Nina. Yeah. We're so, doing this. We're going to survive yes. this. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. In fact, me, I, I cried my dad, I think, two years later when Obama was being elected. Mm. When I was watching him, that's the time I realized, hey, anyway, I don't have a dad anymore, you know. But, um, yeah, it was an interesting uh, event. And, of course, we used to have ministers and, you know, the KQ team that came down to Douala to speak to families and all that. So we had a, a day where um, the minister came. He needed to tell us what they'll do because they were now taking the bodies and stuff uh, from the from the site. The wreckage, yeah. And then many family was were asking questions. And you know, back in the time, I was really skinny. I was like, I saw it. Girl. I saw the vision. I saw it on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when yes. I asked you, I was like, hey, well, I've seen yeah. the vision. Yeah. I was a 49, 48 kg around there. Mm. Yeah. So um, I asked to speak. And they gave me the mic. You asked to speak at, yes, the, at the meeting? at the meeting. Where, where the KQ people were? all families and stuff. So I asked wow. the mic. And I can't remember what I said, but I was the one trending that day. Because wow. like I was like, please, can you stop wasting our time? Yeah. Tell us what's next. I have an exam in a couple of days. I just need to know. You know, just pragma pragmatic wow. questions, you know? Mm. So wow. when that happened, after we left there, I started having ministers of security people coming, asking to talk to me, who's this young girl, who's this chick, you know, who's this one? Wow. <laughs> so that's how I made, um, I networked with people in the government in Cameroon, and as well at KQ, there were one purse, she's called Eugenie Dade. I know, Gigi. <laughs> Gigi. Hello. How she's our, huh? Yes, so Gigi asked to see my mom. And wow. she was like, uh, she's going to come and visit us at home. So she came at home and uh, visited my mom and told my mom, Enyewe, you're blessed to have such a child. Mm. And she asked me what I wanted to do. And I'm like, you guys are wasting my time. I need to finish this high school diploma. I don't even know if I'm going to Kenya or South Africa or Ghana. I'm trying to figure out things. Please don't waste my time. I just want us to do this thing and finish with it mm. and move on. I'm like, you want to go to Kenya? I'm like, yes. You know, I can host you. Come, I'll host you. Wow. And she told my mom, I'll, I'll cater for everything. Just just bring her and sort her school fees. What? So I was like, oh, wow. You know, favor, you know, right there. So I told her, um, I'm going to stay for one more year because my dad had left everything under my hand. And of course, you know, African families, I had to deal with those ones first. Mm. <laughs> um, so I secured all my dad's property and stuff. And then I... I got into a plane and came here to Kenya in the middle of October wow. in 2008. A place you had never been? Never been. Very cold. I only, I only remember the cold <laughs> I dealt with from the airport. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was a, it was a nice experience. And um, I live in her house for almost a year and a half. Wow. At the time, I was telling my mom, you keep my child. Because I had already my daughter who was about three years at the time. Mm -hmm. And I told mom, you know what, I'm coming. I'm coming back for my child. So let me just go. I start school and I'll study at night so that I can work during the day. Mm. So I came and registered at Daystar University because mm. at the time Gigi with her friend were advising me, advising me because I didn't speak English. 
um, and it would be easier for me to be a day star. Wow, did you have to learn English first or you were going to learn English? Yes, I did actually. I, I went to the British Council at okay. the time okay. and asked if they could give me some classes, intensive English. classes for two months wow. um, so that I can start in January with the, some foundation. Okay. And they told me they had closed, but they have a teacher that does consultancy classes somewhere in Hallingham. So they connected me and I started doing class with this uh, amazing man. So he trained me for two months. But I've always been good with languages, mm -hmm. so that was not a problem. Yeah, I was going to say that's a bit quick for yeah. two months just to learn a, oh. a whole different language and then to study yeah. in that language. You yes. know, you always challenge me, Nina. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't even know that part about yeah. you because I was just thinking about how, how challenging it was yeah. for you to come here and even to do mm. business. But already to come in two mm. months, learn the language, mm. and off you are to Daystar. Mm. And how long was your course at Daystar? Actually, my course was actually three years and okay. a half. I couldn't finish because of uh, school fees at the time. Mm -hmm. And also, when I left, um, when I was in Cameroon, when KQ, when all that happened, we were told um, to give our parents documentation, like my dad's salaries, what he was earning, so they can evaluate what they can give. And there were two ways to go about uh, what had happened. Mm. We can either go into court, and it could take about 10 years. To battle it and, out. And battle it out and get rich, you know. Or we can get a... Certain, a settlement, uh, a certain uh, settlement, Amount. and then we we move on with our lives. Mm. And I turned and told my mom, "Imagine I have no time for this. Uh, no time are, for court. Yes, it's, it's not going to bring him back. Mm. Whatever they're going to give you is the peanuts. We take, take it. it. We we you just want closure. We you look like you're a person who likes closure. Yeah. You like to close things off. And, yes, and finish with them. Results. Mm. I'm very result oriented. Mm. So I told her we do that, and then we we'll figure out Kumbele, as know? we go. Um, How so old were you again, Nina, at this age? Because you're, you're making serious decisions and, and, and making wise decisions ago. and moving. Wow, yeah. 21. Yeah, okay. I was 21. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, we moved on from there. And then um, when so I... So now you're saying mm. your, your school fees has run out. So how much of your course it have didn't, you done? It didn't run out, actually. Mm. He, I've got siblings. I've got a younger brother mm -hmm. and, a, and a younger sister. Mm. When I came to Kenya... Mm. Um, my sister went to Belgium, and the, the last one. And the one that follows me was my brother went to Bangalore in, mm. in India to mm. study technology. Mm. And my sister was studying a civil engineer. So I used to, even at the time of my dad, because I, I did also accounting in school, I used to really manage money in a certain, you know, I can do projections. Mm. So when I looked at what we had, and I looked at the expenses we do monthly for my brother and, and your my sister. sister. The second year, I told mom, you give me that one year to pay for school. And I thought myself, if I don't get a job that can pay me, don't, I'm not going to be a burden for you anymore. So at least this one can actually pull the this, other two. these other two yeah, at other a certain siblings. level. Wow. They can finish. And of course, they were in foreign countries. Me, I've always been a hustler. Anyway. Mm. So... At the third year, I, I didn't ask for more money, basically. And it was hard to get work in Kenya yeah. as a foreigner. Mm. And at the time, I actually had a, a Congolese passport because I've always been a Congolese until a bit before when I went to Tasca Project Fame when mm. I applied for my mm, Randy's passport. Tasca Project Fame. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so um, every time I would go for interview at Airtel, you know, I, I've always liked communication, marketing. And I'll be too, you know, the interview will go well. Me, I know, ah, happen in But I'm called, you're a foreigner, we have to pay for work permit, it's a lot of money, and unfortunately, we can't keep you. But if anything opens, we'll we let shall you let know. you know. Because I was in uni, I didn't have particularly a work experience mm. to be given a job that's even half of what they need to pay for my permit. Mm. So that's, that's how I was finding hard to get a revenue. And um, I had to stop school. Um, I remember every time I would go, and I would go with my school, my GPN, and I always used to be asked by HR, why are you looking for work? You know, you're doing very well in school. You should just continue, continue and finish. School and, you know? finish yeah. and I was like, no, I need to pay for that same school that mm. you're asking me to, mm. you know. Um, and I just didn't want my mom to have headaches, you know. We needed to pay her rent, we needed to pay rent for the others. We had other things to look after. So, of course, 
as a hustler, I bought a yellow page book. And when I have nothing to do, I'm not partying, but I'm actually sending email, requesting for jobs here and there. Wow. At some point, I didn't even care where I'll be hired. If it's a restaurant, if it's a hospital, whatever it is, there's work, I will go. You know? And I will do it. And I'll do it. And interestingly, I also used to tell everybody I've met. Like when, when I got out of uh, TPF, even the crew, the filming crew that I've met, you know, anybody who had approached me and gave me their contact, I would text them and say, I move, I'm looking for, 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 for a job. For a job. Um, if you don't mind, share with me your email address, I'll send you my, my CV. CV. Wow. So I used to do that very agree. Mm. every single day. I remember it took me quite about three years to get a, a first job. Really? Yes. So the, but thank God I had a home, which is Gigi. Yes, thank God for Gigi. Um, and she really handled me very well. Mm. Um, so I, I so, mm -hmm. yeah. how, how did you get into Tasker Project fame? So that then we can look at the three uh, years. Why Tasker Project fame? Now, you know the way you go with friends and sing karaoke. So guys are logging oh. my singing. Oh, awesome. Like yeah, we haven't got karaoke. Even we, sh we shall go. Even uh, we have to, to go. You. We have yeah? to go. I've never even actually yeah. heard you sing. How come? But anyway. Uh -huh. But I used to sing in French. And yeah. I think that's what people liked ah, the most. Ah, you sang in French. Even I love when you speak French. You know, whenever I yeah. listen to you speaking French, I'm like, oh, even people want to speak say. like that. Hey, yeah. you, say, huh? <laughs> you really speak yeah, French well. It sounds so amazing when you're speaking it. Yeah. It's such an engaging language, yeah, you know, an attractive language. My dad used to our French with Zuli Sana. Uh. Yeah. He's the one who made you speak to French. Like here, I can see parents allowing children to speak Swahili, mm -mm. not in his house, mm. unless when he comes out. So you have to speak French. You have to speak French at home. We used to speak French at, uh, at home and impeccable French. It wow. was it was a rule and it had to be that way. That's amazing. Yeah. I love parenting. Yeah. So you started singing karaoke. Yes. So people started challenging you to go to Tasca Project Bay? My friends, uh -huh. my closest friends, uh, mm. because I think that's the time they had allowed Rwanda to come in okay. as, a, an, as an additional mm. country. Mm -hmm. Um, so, my friend, ah, there's Rwanda in the, you, let's go, let's go. I'm like, what is this Tasker Project for? I'm like, ah, it's a competition for singing. I'm just go, let's go. So I was taken, I had no clue. I had not even gone online to see how, uh, what, it's what all it about. looks like. So I was taken at Kenyatta, no, Kenya National Theatre in town. Mm -hmm. Very cute. And then um, my mom applied immediately. For when the passport? They had not even told my mom. So she applied even the it's dual citizenship, sent by DHL my passport because I had said I had gone to the embassy and did all the stuff. Wow. So I went into Tasca Project Film, Kidogo Kidogo. I am inside. Ah, yeah. Me, I was even going to prove them. You guys are just crazy. Crazy. Well, what is this? <laughs> Destiny si, helps si us they were. Mm? Why are you taking me there? Wow. You know? But you became famous. Anyway, yeah. Too many famous, uh, whatever. What? How did you? What did you? What did you emerge as? Was there? Were there numbers? What did you? How did you do at Tasker Project? Fame? Um, I was. Um, I spent a month. No, it's it's about two months, and I spent a month. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I was evicted, and then a little bit also my other colleague was evicted, and then the third one, which is among our country, won the competition. won the competition. Wow. So the ambassador here connected with us, wow. took us to the airport, put us in a plane to Rwanda, we were being wow. received in yeah, the nation. Yeah, that's what you said, that you were received in the nation, Whoa. at the stadium. I was like your president tomorrow. Eh? Eh? You were every, I mean, you were, that's, you were welcomed by the nation, hey, all three of that, you. On, I'm telling you, we used to have, you know those big uh, four by four, and then you, Uko standing, yes, up waving, like waving like the president like, the people. Eh? Yeah, government. like royalty. Ah, yes. hey, wow. Yes, it was, uh, but amazing. I love the honor as well of Rwanda because yeah. I think that was amazing, you know? Yeah. I think I, it was amazing for them to acknowledge you yes. even as young people. Because yes. you said even the whole stadium, people were there full to full. receive you. Like a new that stadium. That is amazing. Full to receive us. Wow. I, and it shows that what an honor. we are really looking forward to grow even as a nation. As a Rwanda. nation, as Rwanda. And every time there's something that we do positively, they are really there for That's you. That's what I like. They, they celebrate yeah. you. Yeah. They don't just say it go back and no. by the way. They celebrate this is one of us yeah. and, and, yes. and they're doing a great yes. thing. Wow. We were all radio station, TV station. I mean, wow. I was there for a couple of days and it's like, you know, you're a superstar. You are having planning, schedule, eight, nine. We are picking you, ticking here, what, wow. what. 
and uh, the president offered actually to all of us a, a scholarship mm. wherever we want to go but me at the time uh, a scholarship for school for education if you want school if you want to to have like a re recording for your music mm -hmm. you can cover it mm -hmm. but he wanted it locally to be done, done in Rwanda, in Rwanda. Wow. amazing to promote me, Rwanda like, as well unfortunately me I'm going back to Kenya Alpha. Next back slide. to Kenya. Yes, so you went I had back. to go back uh, to, to Kenya. Uh -huh. Of course, he also told the, the embassy to support me when I was here. Okay. So when I came back as well, I wrote to the ambassador and asked them to give me a recommendation later because I'm actually pursuing to get a job. Mm -hmm. Too many slow moments there. Ah, move on swiftly. So I went on with my applications. <laughs> um, and then luckily one of the crew member when I was in Tasca Project fame, just mm -hmm. randomly you tell everybody, and you know me, I didn't care. Even if you're 17 years old, you're 50, I'll tell you. I'm you told for a job. everybody, I'm looking maybe for your a job. dad is looking for someone. You will connect me Amen. anyway. Mm. So, so this guy uh, heard that they're looking for a production coordinator mm. at Ginger Inc., which is one of the leading production company in mm -hmm. this country, mm -hmm. and um, they are looking for a French production coordinator. Wow. Opportunity right there. I mean, if we are there to SMS, where did did that? Uh, huh? Before we had an answer, did my mind Google what is production coordinator? <laughs> you found out what that is. You know what is the film industry? I had no clue wow. that what we see on TV there's actually a team behind behind it, it that produces it. No clue. Wow. So I say, just reading about it, I say thank you for for, for connecting me. When can I go for an interview? Like she said, come on, on Monday. It was a Friday. I had only one day or two to prepare. Okay. I said, anyway, it's better than nothing. So I went on Monday, on time, and I met this amazing lady. It's amazing. Ah, very intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> Ginger. Oh my goodness. But she's a lovely lady. Yeah, I mean, she's, I know her really, as well. she's a really nice person. She's really trained me, and, and what I accomplished, even the biggest things I accomplished, even in the film industry, is because I've encountered her. That's amazing. Uh, so we had an interview, she would ask me a question, I said, I don't know, I don't know what you do, really? but just teach me. And I'll do it. Just give me one week, I don't know what to do. One, one week. week, and I'll do it. Take time. I love your honesty teach me. as well. In one um, week, I'll be able to do it. I'll run, wow. like anybody here. Wow, and she believed you. She was like, oh, okay, when can you start? I said, when you want. She took me downstairs the same moment. Had me the same moment. Wow. Took me downstairs. I love that. Where they were the team. And then told a lady, because now they were looking for a French production coordinator because they were an English one. Mm -hmm. And we were meant to cover as many African countries for that project. Okay. For Red Bull or Starbucks. Mm -hmm. So um, she, she tells Fatma, Fatma, this is the new recruit. Please train her. Show her how things are done. Show her the here. ropes. Okay. And let's see if she's going to survive. Mm. I said, guys, give me a laptop. Just give me a laptop. And then she showed me two, two three things. And it's very interesting that um, today we even have a lot more time to teach young people. Back in the time, ah, they don't even want to hear. You sort yourself. You wow. Know? So I had to quickly like do YouTube tutorials, trying to learn oh, things, you know, I document to myself. Yeah, .com generation for sure. And I managed to get 23 countries uh, on board. Wow. And uh, the day we were going live, uh, I su succeeded 21 countries out of 23. Wow. Well from done. that point, I never left that company. Wow. You were just moving like forward now. Like now they are moving me from a project to another to another, even wow. when, when they didn't need a fr my French. Mm. So... It was a very interesting uh, process because I was dealing with production companies in those countries and I would translate it to now my client, which is in the UK and through Ginger Inc. So documentation, contract, I translated, all the conversation I translated, all the details I needed to pass on there, I would translate for them. So it's like I'm translating English to French people in French, and then the French people give me in French and I translate in English to, this. to these people. So I was very, wow. I was a strong um, bridge between the two parties mm. and just making sure that everything is done on time and how it should be done. And it was nice. So I, I discovered my skills as a translator at the time. 
you uh -huh. discovered your skills in production, in production, in how well. you love film because yes. that's still involved in what you do today. Yeah. As you search for models, that's in vogue, mm. brand wagon, advertising, advertising, and then pick caliber still to pick up, but photography. Yes. But even more recently, I want to talk about Spotlight, what mm -hmm. you did the other day. Yes, um, Sandra and her team, Aspire, had a, yes. a conference or sort of or a, what is it, a one day um, seminar on, oh. on on photography. So that's also gonna pick up. Uh, your photography and your passions yes um we we do stuff for, into photography and how i found myself in photography is uh, my late husband had a passion for photography mm. so a lot of time i would actually set up for him and he used to do a lot of product shoot you know like uh, clients would give him parks and then we shoot he had turned my sitting room as a studio you know i fought and then i gave up <laughs> at some point you know and um, during that time, I'll do the setup of the lights, of the camera, making sure everything is done. Mm. So when he'll come back from work at five, and then he'll do some, we some call shoots. them PJs. Yeah. You guys know, you know? Inside we all have understood. PJs. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he would come and find everything set up, you know. And little did I know, I'll start taking the camera and trying to shoot as well. Wow. And uh, when he discovered I can actually shoot, he started teaching me how, how to, to shoot. shoot. And when he started teaching me how to shoot, I started hating shooting because now it has come, Nina is going to be shooting. I just check if he's done the job. Yeah, I'm like, I have to be a mother during the day, I have to be a wife, I have to be a film industry person, I have too much work, please. You know, I, I was just trying. Yeah? It's not like it's going to be my next job, you know. So, yeah, so I became the botch. <laughs> but it's good because it showed you something yeah. else that you can do. It yeah. got you a, a time now. I see the other day mm. in the Spotlight um, seminar, you were there talking mm. about your journey to mm. photography. So, so much has happened. I think yeah. finally, Nina, what yeah. I wanted to ask you is, uh, for me, the most fascinating thing about you, I'm so glad I've learned even more about you, mm. is that you have you have thrived. I don't say survived. You have thrived in, in a nation that is not your own. Mm -hmm. in a, in a, and you came here under adverse circumstances mm -hmm. your father had passed on mm -hmm. but somehow you talked to people and they got you and you came bravely but what is it i want you to look at that camera and just mm -hmm. talk to somebody else who's here who's probably gone through um hard things like you have mm -hmm. but also you're here and you're making it work you know every time i see you i say people are struggling to do business even here and they're kenyans mm -hmm. and you are here as a foreigner doing well paying your taxes mm -hmm. doing all the things that need to be done how is uh, do you think that's do you think do you look at yourself and see that's a great thing that you've done um, definitely. Actually, what, what I've always dreamt for, even as an entrepreneur, is that I'm going to make an impact for this continent. Mm -hmm. um, Africa has always been portrayed as, you know, the place where there's... Nothing is happening. You know, we a can't do it continent. ourselves, mm. a dark continent and mm. all that. And, and for me, I believe that we can actually be the people who are source. You know, the Europe, the Americans, all these people. Mm. And one of the things I want is that whatever I'm building, mm. even if I'm already gone, people have bought my vision and they're carrying on that vision. They're executing that vision. Um, um, the way I, I feel. The way you had watched yeah. it, the way you had, you had envisioned it. I had envisioned it. Mm. So I know we, we've got a, an agency called Invoke Models and I could today call Ford Models or all these mm. people and ask them to partner with them. But no. you said no. You want it no. to be an African product. I want it to owned be owned by Amazon. Africans, run exactly. by Africans. Exactly. And if they need our service we can we provide can the service. service. Yes. 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 Okay. We have the excellence. Exactly. We can also execute it. We have the yeah. ideas and we have the vision. Exactly. And it's amazing because we've just been talking about also that how Africa is emerging. Yeah. It really is. I know people say it's an emerging market, but we're also emerging and that we are we are proud of who we are. Yeah. We don't want to we don't need a uh, like before, a European partner yeah. or an American partner or a yeah. foreign partner to partner with yeah. us, yeah? yeah? We're gonna make Africa great yes. with Africans and with Thank African you. ideas yeah. and ideologies and vision, and that's yes. amazing, yeah? With our own flavor. Yes, know? with our own African yeah. flavor. Yeah, yes. Your Lingala flavor. Ah, bien sûr. Yeah? yeah? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure somebody out there has understood what that is. Yes. I'm sure you're about to get up and dance for us, but oh, you for know. Sure. Mm? But I, um, I, I love that. Yeah, and we can stand in the gap because, I mean, we have a lot of talents in, in Africa, in this nation and, and in some this of continent. them probably don't have the the urge to swim in the deep end. 
if you can be that you know that that channel or that bridge for them to actually see that 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 is possible then they can also try something and i mean the youth is going into a space right now with the digital things are going to be on fire and fire yes eh, fire Oh, Hallelujah. Fire. But it's amazing because yes. also it's a platform, you know. Yeah. I love the fact that digital is a platform that can get you into every every nation of the world, into yes. get you into personal spaces, into people's phones, on, on their laptops. I mean, right where they are. I don't even have to leave here, you know. We just shoot yes. the video, we edit it, and we send it, you know. <laughs> send it, boost it, people share it as well, and it goes. And I, I think it's such a beautiful and powerful platform. Yeah. And I think it actually fits into the yeah. kind of people and the kind of generation that you are. Yeah that you're going to do great and mighty things through sure. through digital media. I'm yeah. sure you're going to do amazing things. But right now, so you do Brandwagon, which is an agency, mm -hmm. you a creative agency. Yes. You do Envo, which is for models. For models. And you do Pixcaliber, which commercial is in terms models, of actually. commercial models to yes. shoot commercials. Commercial. And that is Nina. But we're going to have Nina back. Okay. We must come back and discuss uh, turning pain into purpose. Oh. That's going to be another, another conversation because I can't have it today. No. And also, we must have you back to talk about how you came into PLF kicking and screaming. Eh? Nina Bola giving me a headache. But how, look at what, what God has done, has done with you. But that's definitely going to be a conversation for another day. The issue of being day. real. The issue of being real. Yes. You must be real. Yes. You must be real and, and show people that. But that's, today I wanted to really capture the fact of being an entrepreneur in this uh, nation and this continent. Being from so many different countries, from Rwanda, from Burundi, from Cameroon, because you grew up there as well. Being from Benin, I didn't even know, and um, and uh, Congo, that your father was from Congo, and being able to succeed here, you know, three years of diligence, and actually that breakthrough came. Yes. So actually, if you're out there, the breakthrough can come, you know. Yes. Look at that determination, three years of trying to move forward and get this done, and, and she actually did, and I really, I really love that. I really love that you, you have such a resolve and such an energy and such resilience. a passion, resilience, actually, <laughs> another word. And, and you, when you, you want yeah. something to work, and it has to work. And I really love that, and I commend yeah. that for you. And I, I pray that we've spoken to any other woman out there and, and, and other entrepreneurs. So speak into the cameras, yeah. give them your parting shot, even as we end. Um, for me, I'll say never give up. Um, we only live this life once, mm. only once, mm. yeah. So never give up. Yeah. Go for what you want. Um, do it the way you want um don't care about what people think it's about you um and if what you're doing it's actually impacting the society if it's it's your purpose if it's your vision nothing nobody can take it from you it's mm. yours yeah amen wow you're watching just angie my name is angie morenga i have nothing to add to that except to say please share please give us your feedback talk to us about your entrepreneurship journeys and even being a foreigner in this nation and how um, and, and maybe the challenges you've, you've, you've experienced, but also the, what you've overcome yeah. and what you've succeeded in doing. And like Nina said, never give up. God bless you and see ya. Hey, I've decided I need to pray. <laughs> pray. I've decided, you know, entrepreneurs is, uh, are required in this continent or this nation and they actually make a big part of the youth. And so I feel like we need to pray. So as we pray for Nina, pray for she, she's standing in the gap for all entrepreneurs. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus' Amen. name, but let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to pray for all entrepreneurs everywhere, Lord. We thank you even there's that generation of millennials, Father, Lord, that really they need to be entrepreneurs, Father. When we look at this continent, Father, there are no more white-collar jobs. We need people to get into business and learn how to do business and create jobs and create powerful economies, create uh, um, um, places of manufacturing and adding value to products, Lord. And so, Father, Lord, I want to pray to decree and declare to every entrepreneur wherever they are that, Lord, you would cause there to be a rising up, a stirring up in their spirit, or uh, I decree that you connect them to the right people just like you did for Nina. Cause the right destiny, um, help us to open up doors in the name of Jesus Christ. Give them courage, give them encouragement. Let them meet the right people. I decree and I call forth every divine strategic resource that they need to execute the vision of their hearts. Resources of people, of time, of technology, of finances, Father, of ideas, of strategies, of platforms, opportunities, contacts, and networks, Father. 
everything that they need to do and to execute the vision that you're placing in their heart. I pray for everyone out there who is discouraged that they would be encouraged. I pray like Nina has said, they would never give up, Lord. That they would get up, Father, they would continue. They would be in earnest. They would tell and talk to everybody. You know, like the way she talked to everyone that she was looking for a job. That they would talk even to the right people, cast vision to the right people. But also I feel in my spirit that you would raise Mordecai's. You would raise up mentors and, and coaches. And, and people who would walk with other with other with these entrepreneurs, not for gain, you know. The word of God says not to gain anything. Let the compensation that for those who walk with such people come from the Lord. But people who want to incubate people's businesses, people who want to incubate people's ideas and walk with them and, and ensure that these um these visions are executed on this continent, in this nation, and on this earth, Lord. So I pray, raise up Mordecai, raise up coaches, raise up mentors, raise up people who can incubate people's businesses and young people's businesses and give them the resolve, the resilience um, and the persistence and the determination to go forth and to do that which you have called them to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. Amen. God bless you. So God bless you. Right. Good you, Benice. Thank you.